I don't know if you guys remember, but we were growing potatoes in our veggie pod here and we planted them up around November or December and we wanted to see how potatoes grew in this veggie pod and now that the tops are all dead, they're laying over, we're gonna get them out of here because these old leaves here are thrip magnets. Well, I'm gonna get these out of here ASAP. Now let's go see how many potatoes we have under that soil. Well, the good thing is, is that we found one already. So now let's just kinda dig down there and see if there's any others. Oh yeah, I found quite a few. So this is what's really nice. This was the Peter Wilcox variety. We actually saved some from our garden last fall for eating and then saved some from that batch for growing because they were sprouting in the house. And um, we wanted to, to grow more of these because we actually couldn't find any more of these online for purchase to grow. And this is one of our favorite potatoes. So it's got the beautiful purple flesh on there. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at this. That color is just really impressive. But when it comes to eating, that's what's even more impressive. So the flesh on the inside, it's like a golden flesh on the inside. These are great for boiling, frying. They're just really not good for mashed potatoes. They can get real like a, a tacky texture. It would be great in like a German potato casserole or, you know, they, they keep their shape and they keep a little bit firmer, but oh, they are just so delicious. in the veggie pod as we would in the raised beds but these really are only so deep and I could really only mound it so much usually in the in the raised beds we are able to plant them a lot deeper and I feel like that produces more production for us more potatoes but hey it's still more than what we would have had at this time of year usually we don't grow anything until you know the garden starts so right now to be able to enjoy homegrown potatoes this this is amazing and this is before you know all of this stay at home and the virus started so this was like the perfect year to have the veggie pod growing with food this right here will probably take care of a couple meals for us all I'm gonna do with this leftover soil is kind of go ahead and just even it out a little bit over in these areas where the peas are, the herbs are. The other day we pulled the beans out on this corner because they were done producing, they were also a huge thrip magnet. And uh, it was nice to kind of get those out of here. So we just planted up some snapdragons we had going, some zinnias, our trial pro cut sunflower. Once they're done flowering, then they're done, but we just figured we'd kind of make this area look a little bit more happier with flowers. Well, I can never let a space just go empty. So we're gonna go ahead and add in some sun sugar tomatoes. I actually have four of these guys. I'm gonna save the other two. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Maybe just even save them for the garden, pot them up into a bigger container. Um, not sure, but these two here, I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, plant them right here. And these are from seed that we actually seed saved in the fall. Now the sun sugar tomatoes are indeterminate tomatoes. All that means is that they produce all season. They usually need staking, they get overly large, and determinate tomatoes are ones that only produce once. They don't get as 
huge, but they still usually use some staking even though we don't really do a lot of staking with our tomatoes and yet we still have success. Before going ahead and planting these up, we actually always mix in a little bit of the garden tone. Um, we love it, we use it in our gardens and we don't always mix it in in the beginning. You can and that's what I'm gonna do here so that way we don't have to add any more soil or compost. It's already a really nice texture. So we're gonna go ahead and add three tablespoons of the garden tone per tomato plant. And I always say, before you go ahead and spread this into your garden, make sure you don't have like a family gathering planned in the garden because it is a little stinky, but it goes away after two to three days. So we always make sure to have our fertilizing or adding the tone in there planned out ahead of time on a schedule. So if we have a party planned, we're not gonna throw it down a few days before that party. We're gonna make sure to do it after the party or at least a week ahead of that party. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove any bad leaves because these had thrip as well, but we did we did have a chance to spray them. So um, we'll see how, uh, how that new little mixture works. We're also gonna go ahead and take off any little suckers. Suckers a lot of times grow out between the stem and a big leaf, but we're gonna take that big leaf off too. And I also take off some of the bottom leaves here as well, because I actually like to plant my tomatoes a little bit deeper. On the tomato stem, you can always see that looks a little furry. Those are actually all roots. So you can plant it as deep as you want and it'll root. You can also plant it in the garden on its side and it'll root in just like that as well. So I just go and squeeze the pot a little bit, loosen it up a little bit, and then I'm just gonna kinda go like this around the edges, just to kinda break up that root a little bit. Move my fingers like this, I'm not yanking hard. I'm just kinda breaking up that root just a little bit. That helps it take off a lot faster. So now I'm gonna go ahead and dig a nice deep hole. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna sprinkle just a half tablespoon around that since we're planting it super deep. And then we're gonna go ahead and cover it. Now I'll go ahead and do the same thing with this tomato plant. Potatoes. 